Hello guys and gals, me Alex, and welcome to another Scam Sunday, ladies and gentlemen. The part of the week where I do my best to explain and uh, educate you as best as I can on scams that go on throughout the world and what you can do to overcome them so your hard-earned money doesn't get put towards somebody uh, that doesn't necessarily deserve it. Ladies and gentlemen, today, as you can see behind me, is our beloved, beloved website that we all know and love and almost has become a very big part of our society, honest, honestly. It's kind of something that we kind of rely on almost, and I hate to freaking admit that, but hey, you know, it's a, it's a service that works just as well for all of us. But ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be learning about Amazon. Now, as a company as big as this, uh, you know, it, of course, it's going to have some kind of drawbacks. Whether it be a scam, as we're going to be covering today, in this circumstance, Amazon has had a big scam that happened, I wouldn't say recently, but it happened last year. And I really wanted to cover this for a long time because this is going to be kind of a two-in-one episode. So I've always talked about ways you can overcome and not be affected by a scam. In this circumstance, this is going to be how you can avoid being in a phishing email and a phishing scam search, uh, website sorry, situation. You see... Amazon, on the other hand, as you must know, uh, we all must know this wonderful page. Amazon is a pretty much your, uh, for, obviously, okay, let's let's get this out of the way. For those that don't know what Amazon is, it is a marketplace slash buying service, a website, a store, where you can pretty much buy every and anything you possibly, your little heart desires. Drugs, mm, legal drugs, I would say maybe you can possibly get on there. I, uh, again, this isn't uh, to promote that, but obviously Amazon, we all know Amazon pretty much, you can buy every and anything you pretty much look up for. But ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I'm showing you this, uh, the login screen is because there was an email that went out back in 2018, where essentially a email that pretty much said your password has been reset on Amazon, please log in to pretty much, uh, to pretty much log in and reset the password. Well, weirdly enough, as Amazon would do this in certain circumstances, unless you actually physically log in your account and ask Amazon or pretty much tell them to change passwords, you will get a notification. Physically, you have to go through and do that. Well, the reason why you're seeing this is because at one point in time, this was a scam. You see, somebody was sending out emails at one point in time to fish people in to essentially log in, usually put your information in, so you would think you're actually logging into this account. Essentially, it was a fake prop, uh, it, it was a prop email, uh, not email, a prop web page. So essentially, after you would log in your information, you would pretty much be handing the individual or the so-called user that held onto the site, you'd be giving your information away. The only way to protect yourself from that in that certain circumstance was to quickly change your password as soon as you could because you've already given them your current information as it was. Well, in this certain circumstance, Amazon has taken care of the situation pretty damn quickly, I would say, at the time. And I was, you know, this was before I started taking YouTube a little bit more intensely or even Scam Sunday was born. Actually, this would have been perfect to start off with Scam Sundays back then. But, ladies and gentlemen... Uh, Jeff uh, bo, 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 Benz, Benzo, I'm so sorry if I pronounced his name wrong, I have a hard time saying it, but, um, which is weird, actually, this wasn't the first scam Amazon has dealt with, you know, I like the freaking behemoth that Amazon has become, uh, let's be honest, it's, he, Jeff is pretty much one of the world's most richest man overtaking our boy Bill Gates, uh, yeah, obviously something of this behemoth would essentially need some kind of uh, protection or something you need to learn to, not learn, but more something to avoid getting yourself scammed out of uh, a pretty much a site that you use on almost on a daily basis if you, you know, your business relies on buying from them or so on and so forth. But ladies and gentlemen, um, actually, I was kind of reading through some, uh, you know, I was mostly focusing on the email scam and then I started to discover that there were more than just one scam alone. Now, uh, to the street, uh, you know, I'm I'm not a big supporter when it comes to uh, looking up information through kind of blogish sites in a sense. But I can say this is semi-resourceful, uh, I guess you could say. But uh, essentially, I didn't come to realize that I knew some of these scams were pretty much straightforward to the point. You know, a lot of us uh, tend to know that... 
Amazon a- Amazon already has fake reviews as it is, and they're you know that's that's another scam we'll get into another day. But I kind of already covered that with the whole app issue. But ladies and gentlemen, if we look over here, uh, essentially, obviously, gift card scams. This has always been a problem. You know, no third party seller is going to give you an Amazon gift card unless you're buying from like a retail store. In other words, such as a uh, a company most reputable like Walgreens, CVS, Walmart. Usually, tech support scammers kind of ask you to go there to go grab your IRS money or whatever the fuck they want you to do. Essentially, Amazon doesn't, uh, <laughs> you know, it's kind of interesting to see how you could pull off a gift card scam, especially when, you know, when we've, when gift cards are already so secured as it is, but, you know, We'll, uh, we'll, we'll cover that later in the, in the video, but, uh, yeah, your bogus online lists, you know, at the end of it, I kind of can see how this is already a problem because Amazon needs to deal with this as it is because they're already promoting products that essentially don't necessarily, sometimes don't work. And, you know, all companies have to, you know, test products out to the public at one point in time, just to have a, like a good general review where to rank it. But what's more interesting is the um, this job offering. This is this is the one that bought, like really got me. Uh, we'll read over here. Amazon pays its employees well and works them hard. We're not going to mention the fact that they uh, their break times are a little uh, a little fucked. But you know we're we're not here to judge Amazon. We're just reading the scams that have uh, essentially have been uh, debunked or dealt with as it is. So and it works well them hard. So landing a job for a person who places a premium on a salary is a pretty big deal. Amazon job scammers leveraged the demand for Amazon jobs by posting false employment advertisements or phone potential or phoning potential job applicants with offers to work for Amazon. The catch is on, on this scam. The fraud art artist will ask for an upfront processing or finder's fee. That's, ladies and gentlemen, there is nobody nobody in the world even if there's another galaxy at least in this in this century or this universe or in this planet there is nobody that will go out of their way to offer you a job or ask you hey would you like to work for us by the way it's a 50 dollar fee don't worry we'll refund you your money back that's not how any business no stable business or legit business will do that and i know i'm kind of getting heated but in for the right sake that is fucked up in all aspects for somebody to go out of their way to say, Hey, I need to make money. Hey, awesome. I got a job offer. But then when you have somebody's like taking away that money that you worked for, it's like, you know, yeah, God, the scam artists are just definitely a breed of people that you got to question sometimes. And you know, some of them just do more, throw all their fucking morals away, man. And it's kind of sad. It really is sad to see, especially a job offer that, as just d- disgusting in my eyes, but you know, not everybody is uh, made equally. I guess you could say. Uh, finder's fee usually required a credit card, or banky, a bank account number, or even an Amazon gift card. <sighs> you know, that's got to be the most. At that point, you got to know it's a scam. I got to be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. At that point, you just got to know it's a scam. If Amazon is offering you a job and they want an Amazon gift card, you you don't think that. Something might be a little up, you know, it, it, you know, there's a, you know, some people actually fall for it and it's kind of sad, but you know, that's why I make these videos because I want to educate you guys on this, on the fact. I don't want you guys being hurt. I don't want you guys being, uh, you know, being hurt out there when it comes to these sort of things. The Amazon phishing scam. Yeah, this was pretty much the, uh, the whole thing, the steal of the social. Oh, actually, I never read this. Phishing related. Amazon Scams are particularly dangerous for the fraud artists aim to hide beyond the Amazon brand to steal the social security number, bank account number, or credit card. That, yeah, the credit card thing was a was a was pretty much a big issue, especially the ones that were logging in through the email. But uh, like I said, ladies and gentlemen, there are a ton of scams that Amazon actually has, but we'll keep reading on to this. Here's, <clears throat> here's how it works. A scammer contacts you via email, which we have already talked about, claiming to be the customer service representative for Amazon. They'll note that your personal data needs to be updated on the Amazon website or the recent purchase can't be completed unless you confirm your personal data. That'll ask you to click on a link, which they I love how they actually add an actual link uh, to that to that sentence. That's actually kind of cute. And transmit the data, which is which in turn takes the data and steers it towards the fraudsters digital servers, resulting in the loss of key personal uh, 
of, fi- of financial information, which paves the way for financial fraud. Which, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of people were, I wouldn't say a lot of people, but a few people were affected by it, of all things. Um, yeah, to avoid this scam, Amazon.com uh, covers phishing frauds in its website. Here's what the company says. Amazon will never send you an unsolicited email that asks you to provide sensitive personal information, which no real company would actually go out of their way to do so. Um, like your social security number, tax ID or bank account number, credit card information, ID or um, questions like your mother's maiden name or your password. If received suspicious email, please report immediately, which I do highly recommend because I get a lot of these emails in general, not specifically from Amazon, but essentially in the same directional path. But ladies and gentlemen, um, we'll we'll read through the scams and I'm going to show you tactics of uh, how to browse the web a little bit more safely because... Like I've shown you in the past with uh, other like eBay scams or loot box scams, when I was on the deep web, essentially, you know, that's a whole different caliber of being protected on the internet. You gotta you gotta be a little bit more. I don't I want to say you gotta be more educated. No, you really do have to be more educated at the end of the day when it comes to that sort of caliber. Because not only that, you're playing with VPNs, you're playing with a lot more antiviruses, you're playing with a VM, which I highly recommend you do, but. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, we'll get into that after. I'm, I'm kind of just rambling on, but over here. Uh, the discount voucher scam, which kind of is interesting. Amazon, oh, that's a new one. I never read that. This common Amazon scam uh, purport, purports to reward you a loyal customer and company discount voucher. The message is usually delivered via email. Yes, actually, I do remember this. But uh, this one actually kind of got busted down quite quickly. Essentially, Amazon was just quickly telling people, or... Uh, the scammers will go out of their way and tell people, hey, you have a redeemable $1,000 gift card, uh, log in to get it now, and essentially you're just kind of giving up that information right off the bat. It was just kind of, it's easily fishing in people, and that's the kind of the sad thing about it. But hey, you know, uh, they, they've they got a number of people, they gathered them, but I would say a lot of the, the issues were taken care of pretty damn quickly, uh, considering this is, hasn't been like, you know, it hasn't been very as intensive as it was before, but hey, you know, hey, when it comes down to these sort of things, eh, it can get very scummy. The fake products, yeah, that uh, Amazon's still dealing with that sort of situation. I haven't seen them do much about it. The right Amazon review scam, yeah, where they offer to pay you. Yeah, no legit company actually does that unless they actually do offer on their legit site, which we'll, we'll cover in a minute here. But uh. Yeah, usually all these kind of uh, accounts, kind of these scams, all come down to the, like the top three things where they ask for personal sensitive information like credit card, social security. Um, they do definitely want your account information, and if so, they can. They uh, they really, really, really try to go out of their way and get the uh, the more sensitive information. Uh, the third one being kind of just just fishing you into it. Once they get through that, the two things are kind of in in hand for them. Unless you're trying to troll them, which I don't recommend you guys doing just because you might get yourselves hurt in the process. It it happens, honestly, ladies and gentlemen. It really does happen. But uh, the best way, I, I wanted to do something kind of visually in the in that kind of sense, but uh, the best way I can do it was kind of just pull up WikiHow, and we all know and love this one. Uh, there's so many freaking information you can find off of here. But I want to show you as simple as just kind of like searching up how to you know wh- how to find a legitimate website in these circumstances it this would be the best visual uh, aspect i can give for you guys without kind of just talking about it and just popping up pictures here and there uh, i kind of just wanted to like really get in depth with it so okay for instance you take the a website like wiki how usually websites in general such or search engines like google majority they do their very hard and best i will give them that to filter out more of the the scummish shit in between links, and they've gotten a lot of better, way better at it. There was a time at one point where we were like looking up a freaking wireless or like a startup. I, I remember one time back in the day was like back in 20, 2004, we were looking for a remote startup ignition system for a car, and we wanted to do that because it was getting cold at, at one point. And ended up clicking on a link, a, a, a legitimate link on the first page, like the second link, and it ended up just installing a, a virus instantly. And it just, it fucked up. It was a network attack, essentially, and it really put us behind at one point, but hey, 
you live and learn, and now with antiviruses and even with the built-in Windows Defenders and stuff, you're more than safe when it comes to that. But going on over here, you okay, for instance, these kind of links right here, if you see right here, HTTPS is usually a uh, the best... It's it, it's it's kind of a how do, how do I explain it without getting too heavily into you know what we'll just read it off here the the best way to explain it in, in the most dummy free sense uh, a website that has a HTTPS tag is usually more secure and therefore more trustworthy than a site using a more common HTTP designation this is because HTTP sites are security certification is a process most illegitimate sites don't bother with. Which is very true because some people weren't noticing on the emails and unfortunately I can't find like a backlog or a picture of it. But essentially with that Amazon issue that was going down with the email, when you clicked on it, like I showed you before, ladies and gentlemen, this here was your actual, like the website thing gave you towards. But over here, and I noticed it, it was actually, because I got the email at one point in time too, the S was actually completely gone. And... This itself, the uh, the your little padlock here, it didn't actually have a connection secure. Usually it was kind of blanked out or it was kind of like a red cross kind of through it. Kind of like how you see my, uh, this, uh, this battery kind of looking thing over here in this corner. Um, usually a legitimate site actually has that padlock saying it's secured and it, it pretty much meets the requirements to be a legit site. Some sites can bypass that and some sites can get away with Fishing you into it essentially now. This is just one simple tactic you can do to you know potentially protect yourself in this sort of fashion. Just when typically you know, just you browsing the web in general because we do it on a daily basis. Computers are part of our lives now, and it's it's pretty much we rely on them to an extent, especially with our beautiful little uh, devices we got in our hand here. You know it. At one point in time, technology is be we're coming so dependent on technology that you're going to have people in between that that want to grab a little bit of money off you in that sort of circumstance. Uh, but yeah, usually uh, uh, over here, actually, this is one I don't. I, I personally, because I've took classes and I've pretty much browsed the web for such a long time, I kind of know I can ex I use more common sense than to, you know, click on a sketchy site, and even if I do, I know when the fuck to get out of there. But, you know, but even I took it to the next level when browsing the deep web, but, you know, clear web stuff is kind of, it can still be a little uh, scummy here and there. Uh, evaluating a website's URL. Website's URL consists of a connection type, HTT or HTTPS. The domain name itself, uh, in, for example, wikihow or the extension .com .net or usually .org. I think that's more government-owned officially, but, you know, it's kind of hard for a, a, a company to to kind of fake that, especially when you buy out a URL. When those URLs are bought out, you can't replicate those URLs. You can if you can find a back door on it, but usually when those are bought out, they take you directly to the actual site. For instance, if I was to go out of my way and type in uh, Amazon dot com it takes me straight to amazon's actual website but in certain circumstances if like it's explaining here some sites will you know sneak in a little like a zero or nike outlet like those kind of sites they even though they look legit and you probably think it's just a scramble of numbers because most of the time some sites have like a bunch of like zeros ones fives l like letters and numbers that kind of just don't make any sense which is understandable but you know that's kind of coming down to the whole coding thing where it's to per, like develop the site just to show you it. But a legitimate site wouldn't do these kind of things. And it comes, you know, a lot of people don't go out of their way to read URLs. And that's where it really comes down to with this scam. If you're not reading the URL, you do put yourself at risk. You really do. But, uh... Yeah, usually these, yeah, you know the one where you, you're the millionth winner or it says down to here, click easy steps. Yeah, don't fall for these sort of things. These will get you in more deep shit than anything. But um, yeah, most of these are just kind of like don't click on the, these kind of adwares. And here's the thing that gets me about these sort of stuff. Oh, and another thing, ladies and gentlemen, the best, if you are sketchy about a site, and again, don't be afraid to browse the internet. Here's the thing. If you're going to browse the internet and you feel like you're on a sketchy site, here's something as simple as this. We'll go here, for instance. We'll go to, uh, is this URL 
legit. We'll just we'll just type that in. Excuse my uh, my shit tier spelling. We'll we'll go to the first site. Obviously, it's it's mostly recommended. We go to like Trent Micro. Uh, let let's say let's say we go to uh uh new grounds. And yeah, we go over here. Let's say we copy the site. We uh we drop it inside there. Let's let's check it out. See if it passes. It comes back as safe. Now, is this the only option you have? No, there are many many other option uh, other ways to kind of to check to see if actual sites are legit, and they're all free. That's the thing. If there's a site that's making you pay to check a URL, that's a scam on its own. Which hey. Like I said, even to check on scams to, to protect yourself can be a scam in the process. You just got to use common sense, ladies and gentlemen. And that's honestly your safest tool you're going to be able to do. But um, uh, over, over, over pretty much the whole premise of this whole video was, you know, it, Amazon is a... Look, I use Amazon all the time. I, I really do. I'm no stranger to it. But when the whole scam rolled out... A lot of people started freaking out at one point, and they were saying, you know, we can't trust Amazon, you can't trust nobody. Look, don't put yourself in that fear factor. When you start putting yourself into that fear factor, then you become, you, you start to have more trust issues than anything, and there's a whole psychological side to it, but look, the best way to protect yourself, ladies and gentlemen, read URLs. If you can't, if you don't even understand how a URL works sometimes, and it, you know, to the to uh, untrained eye, I guess... Yeah, it, it, it would kind of, you know, scare you a little bit, and that's understandable. It doesn't hurt to go look up a URL checker or some kind of, you know, a legitimate site that's willing to go out of their way and check on these kind of websites for you, to, to just because of your own safety, because there are some people out there that genuinely care, like myself. But ladies and gentlemen, uh, I know this was kind of literally all over the goddamn place, but, you know, I this was my two cents on the whole thing, but the best the best way to protect yourself is... You know, use your common sense. If the site looks a little sketchy, get out of there. If you get an email that literally says, like, it's coming from, a um, like, say, eBay, Amazon, or any kind of, like, you know, actual site that you buy from, you know, log, you know, ignore the email, go to the actual website, log in from there, and change your information. Just do it if you feel that paranoid and you feel you need to be safe. Go out of your way and do that. Actually go to the genuine, re like, the actual site versus clicking on that email because emails you know they they always have links in there that don't look normal to the untrained or look normal to the untrained eye but ladies and gentlemen i'm gonna end it off here if you like what you saw please like comment and subscribe dislike if you dislike it tell me if you've ever experienced an amazon type of scam tell me if you got one of the emails i know i talk about these emails quite a lot and i love rating them when you have to send money to uh to some Ugandan prince out there, you know, if Ugandan knuckles, hey, I'd probably pay a, a, a million dollars too, right? But ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to end it off here. Hope you all learned something today. I hope I, uh, even though if you hate me, at least you'll learn something new. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to end it off here. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care and stay safe out there.